Hello and welcome to our lecture on Coombs test. We'll start off by talking about the principle behind Coombs test, then we'll move on and cover the two types of Coombs test, namely direct and indirect Coombs test, and finally we'll finish off by naming few diseases where Coombs test is useful. So let's get started. Normally when antibodies bind to their antigens, agglutination takes place, which can be visualized in the test tube. In some situations, however, incomplete antibodies like IgG bind to their antigens on red blood cells and are unable to cause agglutination. This is where Coombs tests come into place. For instance, if I take a blood sample of a patient with RH positive blood group and I want to confirm whether the cause of hemolysis is anti-D antibodies that are attacking this RH antigen. Note that agglutination will not occur in this case as IgG is incomplete antibody. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add to this blood sample a solution called Coombs reagent which is an anti-human globulin that means it's an antibody against IgG. This anti-human globulin then binds to the FC portion of IgG antibody and completes the reaction causing agglutination to occur. That can be visualized in the test tube. If agglutination takes place, it is known as Coombs positive test. So now that we know the principle of Coombs test, let's go on to discuss its two types. Coombs test can either be direct Coombs test or indirect Coombs test. Direct Coombs test detects antibodies that are bound to red blood cells, whereas indirect Coombs test detects antibodies that are present in the serum and are not bound to red blood cells. Let's look at each one by one. So here is a blood sample of a patient that is centrifuged to separate the red blood cells from the rest of the components of blood. Coombs reagent is then added to red blood cells that are bound to IgG antibodies. Coombs reagent then binds on to FC portion of IgG antibodies and complete the reaction causing agglutination to occur. If agglutination takes place, it is known as positive Coombs test. Now let's look at indirect Coombs test. So here's a blood sample of a patient which is centrifuged to separate the serum from the rest of the blood. Serum is then mixed with reagent red blood cells that already contain the antigen that is to be tested. In addition to this, we also add Coombs reagent as well. Now first what happens is, if antibodies to be tested are present in the serum, the antibodies bind to the reagent red blood cells, and then when you add the Coombs reagent, this completes the reaction causing agglutination to take place. If agglutination occurs, it indicates positive Coombs test. We'll finish off by naming a few diseases in which Coombs tests can be useful for diagnosis. Erythroblastosis fatalis is one, hemolytic anemia, infectious mononucleosis, and there are a few more diseases that can be diagnosed through Coombs test. So that closes off our lecture on Coombs test. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and comment down in the comment section below. And please make sure to subscribe to our channel.